All right, well, like anything, uh, it didn't go as planned. You can see the turnbuckles are not on there, and we had to use some of the old hardware to make it work. So essentially, I just spent $80 on two pieces of chain, and uh, well, it really is like a $20 clevis. steer and do what we can for the rest of today the box blade is definitely nice and kind of smooth with that suspension seat on that John Deere but uh, that's not gonna work the rest of today so instead of wasting the rest of today since I've already wasted half of it I'm gonna jump in the other tractor and do what I can do Jeeps out here is using it to uh, provide some battery and battery charging capabilities. We we're cranking on this for a while, trying to get the uh, trying to get the fuel system to prime, and I just couldn't get it to prime. And it's probably because that water separator is just so clogged up. Every time I turned it over, this the nastiest stuff poured out of it. Uh, I ended up flushing that housing. The housing's up in there, but I ended up flushing it with the uh, auxiliary pump on the the auxiliary pump on the Dodge leftover lunch and so much nasty crud came out of there we'll try and get back to it tomorrow but we'll see what I can pick up locally because Napa continues to let me down with their lack of stock and uh, O'Reilly's and advanced auto, they don't really carry big truck and tractor stuff, so we will see. We're back out here another day. It cost us a day getting parts and whatnot because I mentioned before, it seems like Napa has just gone downhill. It used to be your go-to for like parts. They could get you stuff within a day. Well, they instead made me run around looking for this filter. So I finally found one that had one in stock. It was like an hour drive from here. So I ran up, I left the, the property early yesterday and I ran up and got a new filter. And they only had one in stock even though the computer system said they had more than one. So I had to order a couple online anyway, which, you know, I guess that's what I should have just done from the get go. So there's definitely algae growth in this tank. And that's what's clogging up all these filters. So we got some bioside here. And uh, it says like one ounce per 25, let's see. One ounce per 20 gallons for a shock treatment. So I don't really know how much is in here, but 
call that. And then I've already treated the fuel in the auxiliary tank, the transfer tank on the truck. So we'll just kind of be adding to it. Man, I drove over a skunk today. I didn't even hit that skunk. I drove over top of it. And my truck smells like skunk now. All right, the other thing we did is we got a bunch of fuel line. So we're going to put new fuel line on this tractor from the tank all the way up to uh, the filter housing. And that's next. There's not going to be a great way to do this without losing diesel fuel. So I'm going to go get a drip pan and uh, we'll put that under the tractor while we're swapping fuel hose. What we'll do is we'll start the fuel hose up at the housing and run it back. So all we're doing at the tank is uh, unplugging the old hose and plugging the new hose in. So we should lose, well, really almost, almost none, but some. Plan is take this piece of paracord and this really dull razor blade. I feel like I see something on my nose. Anyway. We're going to try and zip tie it to the new hose. Actually, we want to tie it in a loop. I think. I think this is going to work. Zip tie it to the new hose. Do two on this side just for good luck. Then we're going to zip tie it to the old hose. And hopefully pull it through the rear part of the engine, in between the engine and the tractor frame. Oh, and the other thing I want to do is, uh, I'm going to throw some tape on the end of this so that we don't drag dirt into it. It's going to be a mess to get off on the other side. But it is what it is. Oh, but there's the paracord right there. So let me go find some needle nose pliers or a hook. That truck is so full of randomness. Sometimes it works. Then you want to position these clamps so that you can actually get access to them. Especially in this case, because this thing is going to be buried up tight behind this plastic cover. And this is where we find out the hose size is not 5 16 Thank you, internet. And it's so cold that it's not going to expand well for us. We'll get back to this. Ideal? No. Does it work? Yes. We got the other side on. We're going to get the right hose and redo this. So, yes, I'm wasting my time. But to run and get a new hose is going to cost me about an hour and a half today that I don't have. So, this is the last side we have to get on. And then we can get this thing primed up and start dragging some dirt. Ideally, you just want the heat off the flame. You don't really want the flame touching the hose, but ideally it went out the window a while ago, I think. So... Just keep that end as clean as you can. Don't mind all the uh, wet spot on the ground here. This is going to be messy for sure. There's no way around it. Especially with the wrong size hose. Because this isn't going to go quick. It's going to run down my arm.
but it's gonna leak on the back of my head. Waste some diesel. All right. Oh, yeah. All down my arm. And I didn't bring an extra coat. All right. I don't know how much diesel is in there. I know at least five gallons because that's what I put in it yesterday or two days ago the last time it ran so we're just gonna let all this diesel fuel drain out another issue I don't want to waste more fuel than I absolutely have to so let's get her primed up well let's try and get her primed up <laughs> when you're buying jumper cables don't even waste your time on the little tiny cheap ones Just invest in a good set like this those little cables just don't carry enough amps in them to be useful. And these things are like 20 feet long. that battery keep charging off of the pickup truck a little bit longer even though I'm gonna run this tractor for several hours today if not like most of today fingers crossed um, we'll just put some of that strain on the uh, the pickup truck alternator it's a lot more powerful than the little one that this tractor probably has if you're looking for a how-to on how to prime a John Deere 5105 This wasn't it. I will show you what I did. And this is just off of like these Dodge Cummins. I used to have one with the VP44. It was a 98 and a half. But it was like the first half year of the 24 valve, but it had the VP44 and a lift pump. And my lift pump, my lift pump went out. Uh, so I put a new lift pump in it and a gas station parking lot, 7-Eleven was not half but I had to bleed the uh, the lines and those you crack at the injector. So I was hoping I didn't have to do that with this because even though this engine appears like it's accessible, these loader arms are a pain in the butt. So you'd have to climb up in here, probably from the other side. Then that exhaust is right there as well. So 
I was really hopeful I wouldn't have to crack those injector lines. But here's what I did. Fill the filter with fuel. So that that's already done and you can get, I just assumed you could get a good suction started on it already. So filled this with fuel, popped it on here. Uh, I ended up having to pop this off and open this up. And what I initially did was unscrewed all the way, put my thumb over it just so it's quicker to pull my thumb on and off than to screw this in and out. So then I just started pumping this. So pump it down with your thumb off and then put your thumb on it so that you're suctioning from the feed line uh, and then once i started getting enough fuel like starting to flow out of here then i just started pumping it really fast and then i started seeing it come out of the inject the the line that goes to the injection pump so when i got that i put the screw back in or the plug pumped it really fast yep good flow out of there pop that back on and the one on the other side although i had it off yesterday uh i was able to just pump that really fast and then this is this line here it comes in here does magic injector pump stuff inside here to increase the pressure and then sends it up to the injector and the way i understand injection pumps like this at least is that you have so you got like common rail where the rail just always has fuel in it and uh electric signal tells the solenoid on the injector to open or you have one like this where you have to have enough pressure in that that line to uh, pop off the injector. So, and the concern is, again, as the concern is, as I understand it, disclaimer, uh, I know this to be fact, air compresses and fluid does not compress as well. I'm not a scientist, never claim to be a scientist. So anyway, uh, if you have air in your lines, the air will compress before the injector will pop off which is why you need to let that air out of the line so that there's more fluid in there than air and thus creating higher pressure and allowing the injector to open uh, at the set pressure but none of that matters right now today because we got a running john deere and uh we need to put this thing to work 